morning good morning praise the lord everybody how many grateful people do we have in the house this morning i mean you are just so grateful that you woke up this morning you were so grateful that you were able to breathe this morning and move on your own are you really grateful this morning to god his mercy and doing brother he loves us come on somebody how many know that god's loving and if you're so grateful about his love towards us no matter what we do, no matter where we are, no matter what condition or state we in, God still loves us. Praise Him in the place today. I am so grateful this morning just to be alive. Not everything is going perfect, but I'm still here. I am alive. I'm able to move on my own. And I give God praise in the place today. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I am grateful this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Welcome to Temple Church of Christ, the best church. Hallelujah. The happiest church on this side of the Mississippi. Hallelujah. And we welcome you this morning, September the 10th. Hallelujah. I am Minister Levator Rice here to share our morning announcements. The mission statement at TCOC is that we swim, we serve, we share, we worship, we win souls, we intercede and make disciples for Christ. And some of the ways we swim are shown in the following announcements. Join us for our regular weekly services, Christian education Sunday classes at 9 o'clock a.m., Sunday morning worship service at 10.30 a.m. Monday night prayer is at 7 o'clock p.m. Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. And we're fasting every Wednesday from 12.01 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Victorious Living Teleconference every Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. Everyone is invited to attend this month's Temple Church of Christ Sisterhood Zoom meeting on Tuesday, September the 19th from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. This month's featured speaker is Minister Shante Harris, who is speaking on Lydia. We hope you will join us for this virtual gathering. Check the TCOC app. Facebook and website for your Zoom information. This year's sisterhood theme is the heart of a godly woman. TCOC outreach volunteers are needed at Little Sisters of Hope, located at 3225 North Florissant Avenue in St. Louis on Saturday, September the 24th from 1 o'clock p.m. to 2.30 p.m., Contact Outreach Director Sister Waikita Lee for more information. Suffragette Bishop Ilona Dixon of Radiant Life in Christ Apostolic Church in St. Louis will be the guest speaker at the Ministry Alliance Glory Line 3 Conference on Saturday, September the 30th at 9 o'clock a.m. until approximately 4 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon. Registration is $50.00. T-shirts will be sold separately at the TCOC bookstore. Our previous, previous Glory Line T-shirts can be worn. See Sister Evangelist Cheryl Oliver or Minister Militia Lindsay for more information and more details will be forthcoming. Payments are now due for, every, for anyone who has submitted RSVPs for the Eckerd trip on Saturday, October the 14th. You may make your payments via cash, check, give Lafay, or credit card. If you have any questions, please see Sister Natasha Williams or Sister April Young. The Temple Church of Christ Marriage Ministry Meet and Greet kickoff will be on this Sunday right after morning worship, immediately following. Please see Sister Dr. Saint and Levada Rice for questions. Refreshments will be served and this is for all married and engaged couples as well to participate. The perfect and the not so perfect. <laughs> Amen. Couples, please join us on the lower level. We look forward to seeing you all. A couple of seats are still available for their sisterhood for a one-day trip to Branson. No. Oh, we're sold out. 
All righty, praise God. All righty, we are officially sold out for the Branson trip, and we're all looking forward to it. TCOC, Christian Education and Youth Announcements. Build your ice cream fundraiser after the worship service each Sunday. Bible Studies Method Class, Room 6 and 7 on the lower level. Youth Video Series, the lower level doing morning service. The next new members class will begin on October the 1st. Interested, please sign up and see Sister Carol Batterborns, Minister Nija Crisp, or Sister Natasha Williams. Congratulations to, thir to the 32 members who had perfect attendance in August. Congratulations for our Christian education classes. They will receive a $10 gift certificate to use in the TCOC bookstore after its grand reopening. If you were not able to meet the goal in August, let's shoot for perfect attendance in September. You can do it, TCOC. The TCOC is reading the book of 1 Samuel for the rest of September. Check the TCOC app under events for the corresponding chapters and dates for the daily Bible readings. Once you complete your reading, please check yes for that day. Announcements can be found on Facebook, the TCOC app, and the TCOC website. They are also sent via Fate Teams text messages. Please check all these modes of communication for the TCOC events. TCOC members are encouraged to check the app for daily announcements, updates, and information. Now, would you all please stand as Evangelist Cynthia Washington lead us to the throne of grace this morning. Praise the Lord. One songwriter said that prayer still works. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace, humble as we know how, thanking you for the many blessings that you've already bestowed upon us. Thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Thank you for being God all by yourself, your Lord of Lords and your King of Kings. You are almighty God. You are blessed God. You are caring God. You are delivering God. You are an everlasting God. You are a faithful God. Thank you for sitting high and looking low. And thank you for looking beyond our faults. But yet, you meet our every need. Father God, we thank you for the angels of this house. Suffolk and Bishop Ronnie Stevens and Lady Doretta Stevens continue to bless them and their family and Lord just continue to look and have mercy on Temple Church of Christ as a whole Lord Jesus bless each and every member and visitor and don't stop there Lord but we ask that you look on the prayer list this morning Lord Jesus continue to bless and heal and deliver and set free Father God lift up every bow down head and mend every broken heart Father God for you are God all by yourself and you're God alone. You said, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Because everyone that asks, receives. And everyone that seeks, finds. And everyone that knocks, the door is open. Blessed, 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 blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you, we praise you, we lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep those hands clapping. Say something sweet to our God this morning. Hallelujah. God, we love you. We bless you. We exalt your name, Jesus. We lift you high, God. We love you. We appreciate you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. How many of you know there's nothing too hard for God? It's easy to say until you get into a situation where you feel like, okay, Lord, are you going to come through for me? But there's nothing, absolutely nothing too hard for God. He's in control of every situation, every circumstance. And we bless him and we thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Exceedingly. 
According to the power that worketh in you, you, God is able to do just what he said he would do, and he's gone
he won't give up on you. He's a hero. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. No problem too hard. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's able. He's able. Bless you, Jesus. He's able. He is able. Sometimes you got to remind yourself because we get in the way. We want to put our hands on the situation. We'll say we're going to take our problems to the altar and leave them there. But we go babysit the altar and go back and forth checking. God, did you do it? But he's so able. He's so faithful. He's so mindful of us. There's no failure in him. There's no fail. He's never failed. The old song says he's never failed me yet. But we don't even have to say yet. He's never failed. And he never will. He never will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. He's everything. He's everything you need him to be. He's everything. There's nothing that you need that he can't be. He's everything. He's everything. We put so much trust in man, but they let us down. But he's everything. That's a loaded word. He's everything.
God is good. Yeah. If you really love the Lord today, I dare you to lift up your hands. Hallelujah. 
because God has been so graciously good. Yes. He's victorious. Yes, he he's powerful. Yes. And he's strong and mighty. Yes, he is. And as we sing this song, I want you to lift up your hands and give your God some praise. Yes. Because he deserves all the praise. All Amen. The praise. Amen.
you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship the Lord. Can we worship the Lord? I'll hasten. I'll hasten to his throne. I'll pursue his throne. I'll chase after him. His throne. I'll, I'll pursue. I will run. In a haste. I will pursue him. chase him. I will haste to his throne. love the Lord. He heard my cry. Can we cut our hands one more time and give God the praise and the glory as to his name. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. So what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Thank you. So Danielle, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful selection and to our praise team. Amen. It's the Rogers and the entire praise team, we thank you for your ministry this morning. And praise the Lord to everybody. Praise the Lord and welcome to Temple Church of Christ. Uh, as particularly those who are on social media, we're absolutely delighted and honored that you have joined us today. Thank you so much. And to our Temple Church of Christ family, we say to you, praise the Lord and good morning. It's so good to have you. Could we clap our hands one more time? Amen. Because... We are here because we love the Lord. The praise team just told us why we're here. We're here because we love the Lord. So, so we come together every Sunday morning and we convene. We come together collectively, corporately as a family and we worship him because we love him. And God desires that we worship him. He desires that we come together and we worship him. So we're here because we love the Lord. And we love to come together with our brothers and sisters. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's just something about being in the house of the Lord. Let's clap our hands one more time and give God the praise and the glory. So welcome, welcome everybody. We're so glad to have you. I do want to take this opportunity to thank everyone. On last Sunday, Lady D and I were in conference in, in Chicago and uh, just so happy that things went so well in our absence. It's a, it's a good thing when the pastor's away and things go well. Amen. And amen. Evangelist Pamela Mitchell Thornton did a wonderful job. Didn't she preach a wonderful word? That was so wonderful. We thank you for Elder Griffin for your, your support in our absence. Amen. Elder Griffin and his support and all of you who made a, any kind of contribution in our absence. I want to say thank you, thank you so much. It's just good to be away and get we're in conference in Chicago and to come back and just and and just know that everything went so well. So I do want to take this opportunity to say thank you for everybody who contributed to just a good service on last Sunday. Amen. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. This morning I call your attention to actually two uh, passages of scripture of the book of Luke as well as the book of Acts the book of Luke as well as the book of Acts Acts of the Apostles and the book of Luke actually the same writer of each of these books book of Luke chapter number 3 verse 
number 16. Hear the word of the Lord. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. The latcheth of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Notice I've highlighted the word and. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Book of Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you for your goodness and your mercy. This is the day that you have made and we shall be glad in it. And we thank you. Now we pray, God, that you will speak to us this morning because we need to hear from you. Speak to us. Give us clarity. Give us application of the word. Help us not to be hearers only, but help us to be doers of the word. Build our faith through the preached word. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Talk to us. I pray that this hour will be a great investment of our time. So we need to hear from you. Talk to us. Not only that, we pray, God, you touch someone's heart to the extent that they will say, I want to be saved. Touch someone's heart to the extent that they will say, I want to be baptized. I want to change in my life. Let the word have free course. Lord, don't let it return void, but let it accomplish everything you've designed for it to accomplish. And we should give you the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My assignment today is titled, The Fire That Burns. The Fire That Burns. Once upon a time, in a place called Bethel, Mississippi, there was a little church that was, oh, a little over 100 years old. It was back in a very wooded area there in Bethel, Mississippi. Church was built primarily out of wood, but it was a beautiful church. Beautiful church. But over 100 years, this seating capacity of this church was approximately 50 people. Uh, but on a good day, you could get maybe up to maybe 70 people. A good day would be Christmas or, or Mother's Day or Easter. We call it the CMEs. Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, uh, CMEs. But on a good day, you would have maybe approximately maybe 15 to 20 people, actually. Actually, 15 to 20 people. The seating capacity is over 100. But the seating, but the average attendance was about, we get that right, about 10. But on a good day, it's up to 15. So on the average day, you'll see 10 people in the church, maybe 15 on a good day, capacity seating up to at least 100. Church was well loved in the community, but again, the average attendance was about 10 people up to 15, seating capacity over 100. One, one night in this little town in Mississippi, Bethel, Mississippi, this church caught on fire. Uh, somehow, one cold December night, 
the church was in flames. And throughout the community, people were saying, the church is on fire. The church is on fire. And people throughout the community came to this particular location to see the church burning. There were some who came with buckets of water to, to throw water on the fire to take out the fire as much as they could. Some came to take some of the furniture out of the building where there was no fire in that location. They came to take out some of the pews and that some just came just to observe. But, but on that night, there are a couple of hundred, 200 people, a little over 200 people showed up on that cold December night while the church was burning. One of the little boys that was there, a young teenager, turned to his grandma and said, Grandma, we ain't never, we ain't never seen these many people at the church. A little granny who was about 85 years old, she said, yes, yeah, son, we ain't never had no fire here. <laughs> For those of you who may have missed it, 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 the reason why there were so many people who showed up at that church that night because the church was on fire and because the church was on fire it caused many people to show up because something was happening at the church that did not typically happen I believe that people don't come to our churches because there's no fire I believe that people don't want to come into our house. They don't want to be around us because there's no fire. The praise team, not, no fire. The preacher preaching, ain't no fire. The keyboard on the keyboard, ain't no fire. The drummer has no fire. The guitarist has no fire. The usher has no fire. The hospitality have no fire. The greeters have no fire. And people don't want to come to churches where there is no fire. It's fire that makes the difference. I want to see some fire. I don't, I don't want to see what I see in the lounges and in the, in the bars. When I come to the church, I want to see, I want to see the fire of God. Sad to say, many of us have been filled with the Holy Ghost, but they lack fire. Oh God, help me, Holy Ghost. I don't want to offend nobody, but I, I, come to, I come to serve notice today. I come, I come with some eviction notices today. I come to put some people out and to invite some people in. It's time to let the fire burn. John the Baptist looked at Jesus and said, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mighty than I come in that latcheth, the latcheth of whose shoes I am not worthy to be worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with Holy Ghost, watch this, and fire. Seems to be a distinction between the Holy Ghost and fire. There's some people who have the Holy Ghost, but you don't have fire. But, but God's plan was that you receive the Holy Ghost and that you receive it with fire. That end is a conjunction word. We got folk who have the Holy Ghost, but we don't see no fire. We can tell you don't have fire. Because if Beyonce come to town, you standing in line waiting to get in there. We can tell. Oh, let, let me stop. Let me stop. I don't want to step on nobody's toes here. But, but, but there's something that happens when a person has some fire in their life. You in prayer meeting, you in Bible study, and you're fasting, and you're reading God's word, and you're interceding for others, and praying for others, and you're going out witnessing, and you're going out knocking on doors, and calling out on God. There's something that follows those who have fire. Oh, God help me, Jesus. I'm, I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not upset with Beyonce, but there's some people, you have fire. We shouldn't see you up there shaking your booty up there. Up there, in there. I, oh, let me stop. Let me. If you got some fire and you've been in the secret place of the most high, you should have fire. 
I, I, I believe oh, we're going to get on fire. I'm going to tell you how to get on fire today. I'm, I'm going to tell you how to get on fire. Hey, we've gotten so relaxed with religion, so settled and laid back. But it was God's design that you have the Holy Ghost and you have fire. Look at the book of Acts chapter number one, verse number eight. The Bible says, and you shall receive power, watch this, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost, but I'm also going to give you power. I'm going to give you power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. So when you get the Holy Ghost in, I'm going to give you some power. It seems to be a separation between the two. It seems to be that you can have the Holy Ghost, but you ain't got no power having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And I'm going to submit to you, anybody who has the Holy Ghost, you have the right and access to power. You don't have to be weak. You have right and access to the fire of God. And this message today, my assignment today is to burn, baby, burn. We're going to burn today in Jesus' name because it's time for us to get back to the fire. Fire. The fire that burns. In Scripture, we notice, as I was studying this text, I'm noticing there are, are some fires that, that do not burn. Positive and negative. We see in the book of Exodus chapter number three, Moses at the burning bush. And there God is speaking to Moses through a burning bush. And Moses is fascinated because God is speaking through the bush, but the bush is not burning. The bush is burning and God is telling Moses who he is. I am that I am and the assignment that he has for Moses that you're called to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. But it's a burning bush. But the bush is not burning. We see another such case in, in, the, in the book of, in fact, we find in, in the book of Daniel, we find such a case of the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. And the boys were in the furnace, but the fire was not burning them. Amen. Fire burns, except when God says, I don't want it to burn. God, God is in total control. But God has called us to be believers to burn because we are the light of the world. And God says you should receive the Holy Ghost and with fire, the kind of fire that burns. Has anyone here ever burned water? Anybody ever pouring water? I'll, an I'll answer the question, no. Because w water, doesn't, water doesn't burn. It, it doesn't burn. And generally things when burn, it turns black. When you burn something, typically the result of something burning, it turns black. Salt does not burn. It's crystal but it won't burn. Now sugar is crystal also, but crystal will burn. Sugar will burn, but salt will not burn. Water doesn't burn. Cast iron doesn't burn. Aluminum doesn't burn. There's some things in our society, in our world today that does not burn. And one of the reasons why it doesn't burn is because it lacks carbon. It doesn't have carbon in it. I'm going to give you I'm going, uh, science 101 on one class for just a minute because I want you to understand fire. And I'm going to transfer that to understanding the fire that God has given us. There's certain things that do not burn because there's no carbon in it. And because the carbon is not in it, you'll have a pot and the pot is not going to melt on your stove. Uh, the salt is not going to melt. The water is not going to turn black because it lacks the carbon. But there are things that do burn. And three things I want you to understand today is three things a fire needs to burn. In order to burn, there are three things that must take place. There must be oxygen, there must be heat, and there must be fuel. Fuel. If something's going 
to burn. These things, three, three things are critical and necessary for anything to burn. And let me say that fire is very significant in the scripture. From Genesis to Malachi, from Matthew to Revelation, whenever you see the word fire, it signifies three things. One thing would signify, it signifies the purification of God. It signifies the, the presence of God, and it signifies the purification of God. We see purification. We see fire. The first time fire is mentioned is in the book of Genesis, chapter number 18, Solomon and Gomorrah. We see that God sent brimstone and fire and destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah. He was showing fire as his purification. That's in Genesis, book of Exodus, second book of the Bible. We see fire, and God is leading the children of Israel, fire by night and a cloud by day. And that fire is representing his, his, his presence. And then we see in the book of Leviticus, we see fire in the tabernacle, in the temple, signifying his power. But we can go from Matthew all the way to Revelation, Genesis to Malachi, and show you that wherever fire is, it always signifies his purification, his presence, and his power. When God gave you the Holy Ghost, when he gave you the Holy Ghost, he also gave you the power, but you've got to allow the power to come forth. He shall baptize you with holy with the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to baptize you in with fire. And there's no reason why you should be a one who does not have any uh, power because God has given you power and he has given you, amen, fire. Let me just do this for a second. If you would take your hands and, and rub your hands real uh, together and rub it real fast together, you will note that your hands will get warm. If you, do, if you just do that for a second. If you can just rub your hands real fast real together, you notice that the temperature of your hands will well, 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 get a little bit warmer. Sometimes in the winter you see people rubbing their hands together in order to warm their hands. If you would rub your hands uh, 150 times per second, actually, scientists say that your hands will actually catch on fire. Now, it's not possible to do that, but if one second you could, you could do this 150 times, your hand would begin to burn, maybe a uh, scar, maybe a little smoke, because of the friction that is occurring. Stay with me, stay with me. Because of the friction that is causing the hand to become warm. Stay with me, everybody. In order for, for something to burn, then, you must have fuel. And fuel is what we call the carbon. It's the carbon that causes the fire to burn. On the screen there, you'll see the fuel. Uh, and the fuel is something called carbon. It's carbon. And these carbon atoms, when they are heated, they begin to shake. Here's why things burn. Things burn because the atoms in the fuel begin to shake. These atoms in the fuel are bumping against each other, causing uh, the kind of heat. And there has to be some oxygen for the fire to start. Uh, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. If something's going to get started, Deacon Sam, you can help me illustrate this real shortly. We're going to move on with this. But ask Deacon Sam to help me with a little fire this morning so we can illustrate what is going on here. Deacon Sam here has a torch, and in this torch, there is what we call fuel, this fuel. The fuel is necessary because the fuel is needed for uh, the heat, and the heat is needed for the oxygen. Amen. He's going to put that together for me in a second here. And we're going to show you here that I want you to understand this concept. Then we're going to translate it over to our spiritual development. Now here Deacon Sam has his torch. And what he does, he has to first start with a spark. A spark that will impact the fuel on the inside. Will you turn it on for a second, Deacon? Turn it on. There he has, he has a torch, and here I have some coal. Coal that you, you barbecue with. If we take the coal and put the coal over the fire, something's going to happen. What happens here is that the atoms on the inside of the coal are going to spread throughout the coal, 
and the coal is going to burn. Somebody say burn. It is going to burn because of the atoms and the oxygen that's on the inside. All right. So we see we have here in the tank here, we have uh, the fuel, we have fire, and we have oxygen, and we have the burning coal. Now, if the coal is all burned up and you're barbecuing, and you find you've been barbecuing all day, at some point you can no longer burn your coal because all of the atoms on the inside have been expired or consumed. Amen, somebody. You got the picture, all right? Stay with me. Thank you, Deacon. I want you to stay with me. Because I want, to under, I want you to understand the power of the fuel, that we must have fuel, we must have oxygen, and, and we must have heat. In order for the church to become on fire, we must have the fuel. Look at the screen. We got the fuel, we got the heat, and we got the oxygen. Uh, we asked today, where is the fire? Well, the fire is connected to the fuel. What is the fuel? Next screen, you'll see. Next shot, you'll see the fuel. The fuel is the word of God. The, the thing that makes us on fire, that something has to burn. And the thing that must burn is the fuel which is the word of God the Bible says but he answered and said unto them it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God the, the reason why we don't see the fire like we ought to see the fire is because we are lacking the word the way the word ought to be in our heart if the word is in our heart it is the necessary fuel that we need to stay on fire for the Lord. Stay with me. Uh, that's why man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The worst thing that can happen is for a believer to have the Holy Ghost, but knows nothing about the word of God. Uh, knowing the word of God makes the difference between day and night. If you want to fight the devil, you need some fire, but the fire starts with the word. No one of the psalmist says thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. For the word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. Uh, what we need in this generation for the fire to burn. We need the word of God. The Bible says let the word dwell richly in me. I want the word to be so full up in my heart that I got plenty of fuel on the inside. I got the burning power of God's word and I meditate on it day and night. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I got to let the fire burn. So, so, so understand. Understand that the word of God is your fuel. It is your energy. It is what you need to make it from day to day. Secondly, we must understand that the word of God, not only do I need the word of God, but you need the heat. Remember, in order to start a fire you got to have the heat you have to have oxygen and the fuel so secondly we see here it is heat uh, heat 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 is the love of God it's not just a matter of knowing the scriptures and knowing the word of God from Genesis to, uh, to Malachi but you've got to have the love of God on the inside of you and though you speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love you become a sounding brass and a tinkling symbol. You got to have the love of God. I'll hold it just for a second. The Bible says in 1 John 5 and 3 for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. His, his commandments are not hard. If there's going to be a fire in the church, somebody got to fall in love with the Lord. You got to be so deeply in love with him that nothing shakes you. Nothing makes you nothing moves you because you're so in love with God's word well you say pastor how do you fall in love with Jesus I'm so glad you asked me because Jesus addresses the question in the book of Luke in the book of Luke chapter number seven he says but there is a certain creditor who had two debtors uh, one owed 500 pence and the other 
were 50 and they had nothing to pay he frankly forgave both them tell me therefore which of them will love him most Simon answered and said I suppose that he whom he forgave the most and he said unto Simon thou has has rightly judged me the person who loves the most here in this text is the person who has been forgiven the great the greatest amount of debt and so one owed 50 the other owed 500 Jesus says they're both forgiven but who loves the one the most and Simon says the one who owed the most who was forgiven that's the one who loves the most look if you're going to fall in love with Jesus you've got to understand the debt you've got to understand how, what he has done for you you've got to understand how he brought you out of darkness into this marvelous light. You have forgotten. You've been so churchy and so religious and sedity and uh, all stuck up. But you got to wake up to the fact that he brought you out of the miry clay. You had a first class ticket to hell but he brought you out. I know you've been saved for a long time and you've been religious but it had not been for God on your side. You'll be all jacked up. And he's yet forgiven you every day. You know what you did last week week he's still forgiving you you know what you said last week he's still forgiving you well well you got to get an appreciation that he forgave me for my sins I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply staying within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters he lifted me oh now now save so safe for my ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters if you're going to fall more in love with Jesus you've got to appreciate what he has done for you what he is doing for you and what he's going to do for you that's why we always go around praising him because it is a sign of our appreciation of what he has done we ain't got so saved and sanctified can't nobody tell us we ain't living right uh, but truth be told if God wanted to find something with you he could find something if God could find a spot trust me he could find a spot but it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not but they are new every morning so in order to have a fire there's got to be some heat there's got to be some love I love you Lord I love you more than anything oh, my daddy got killed my cousin got killed nephew got shot up cousin overdosed on fit now but you saved me you brought me out and I just want to say thank you every prayer you want to be thanking God for delivering you from sin every prayer you want to be saying something Lord I had a bad thought last week last night but you brought me out father I want to say thank you for forgiving me for all of my sins you, you got to look at your portfolio and recognize I got some stuff that God needs a cover in his blood. Give God a hand and pray somebody. It's called self-righteousness. We, we have come to a place where ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm all right. You know, uh, hey, 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 I'm a churchy. I go to church. But it's more than that. Uh, it's only a form of godliness. Uh, God has said that, but I want you to be grateful for what I've done for you. I want you to be thankful for how I'm keeping you. I want you to be grateful how I'm bringing you out. It's called heat. Uh, oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. Now, the third thing, remember we talked about fire fire needs oxygen oxygen is your faith see you can read the word of God and not have faith you can say thank you Lord and not have faith but faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen by it the elders obtain a good report through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so the things which are seen were not made by things which do not appear and without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh unto God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him baby 
girl, if you're going to be on fire for the Lord and you're going to really get hot on God, it's going to require some faith. And the faith is the oxygen. No, oh God, if you don't have the oxygen, no matter how you read the word, no matter how uh, you love the Lord, it's going to take some faith. You can speak in tongues all night long, but if it's not rooted in faith, the tongues of no effect is faith that energizes it. It's faith that opens up the door. Faith, faith in God is my oxygen. Look what the text tells us. And Jesus answered it unto them, have faith in God. Uh, no matter what you're going through, have faith in God. And if there's going to be a fire, and if you're going to experience fire, you're going to have to have faith in God. The Bible says we're not walking by sight, but we're walking by faith. The people who are on fire for God or people who are faith driven. Uh, the Bible talks about Abraham who staggered not at the promises of God through one belief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory unto the Lord. So what are you saying, Pastor? Well, I'm saying to you, the fire that burns needs three things. You've got to have the heat, you've got to have the oxygen, and you've got to have the fuel. Well, you see on the screen, if you live by the word of God, if you have faith in God, if you love God, you will get the fire. If you live by the word of God, if you have faith in God, if you love God, you will get the fire of God. One more time. If you live by the word of God, everybody, if you have faith in God, if you love God, you will get the fire. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it is God who has given us the power of the Holy Ghost and fire and power. He's given us the fire that burns. There's a fire that burns. It burns. How does it burn? I'm telling you. It burns by faith, by love, and the word of God. And the deeper I get into the word of God, and the more steadfast I am with my faith, when I love my enemies and pray for those who despitefully use me, God is setting up a fire that burns in me. Oh God, give God a hand and praise somebody so so pastor what are you telling me pastor I'm saying to you that you have the power to burn stuff and I say well something is burned typically it turns black the carbons on the inside burn out the atoms burn out and there's a fire that burns that burns in you so then the question we must beg the question then what does the fire burn burn what does the fire burn you got the holy ghost and you got fire let me tell you something the evidence that the fire of god is on the inside of you there is rebellion the fire your love for jesus your love for the word your faith in god it burns bitterness it burns rebellion it burns strife you got an attitude you want to be in control of everything but when you have the fire of God you let God have his way because God is in control the fire this fire this fire burns retaliation it burns accusation and self accusation it burns rejection that's why when you get the Holy Ghost with fire there's a kind of peace that you have that passes all understanding standing oh when you get the fire of God sinners come into this church and recognize there's something different about these people in this house that they have something that I don't have when you have the fire of God it burns insecurity anybody insecure you need some fire I know you got the Holy Ghost but you just need more word and you need more faith for faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word when you have fire you don't come
come in here with a jealous spirit. You're just jealous because you can't sing. You're jealous because you ain't up front. But when the fire burns on the inside, that passive spirit, that lazy, depressing spirit, that heaviness, it goes away because the Holy Ghost is burning on the inside. Even the pride is burning and your fears are burning because God hasn't given you a spirit of fear but power and love and a sound mind baby let the fire burn oh, what the fire burns is burning we're reading the word of God and there's no fire because there's no love and we got the love but there's no faith but if I can get the word which is my fuel and my faith which is my oxygen and my love which is the heat there's gonna be a fire up in here oh what the fire burns it burns hypocrisy when the fire is on the inside and the Holy Ghost is moving you and directing you and leading you it ain't no hypocritical spirit in you whatsoever because the fire it burns just like Jeremiah said it's like fire shut up in my bones I got something on the inside that's burning stuff up I got something on the inside that keeps me from lying you got a lying spirit but when you get the Holy Ghost and with power and fire you stop your lying you're not competitive always competing with somebody but when you have fire it burns competition you're so indecisive you can't make up your mind to go left or right but when the Holy Ghost gets hold of you it's able to burn baby burn your indecisiveness ah God help me Holy Ghost when the Holy Ghost really get hold of you your sexual impurities and uh, the Holy Ghost uh, burn it you may be horny baby but I ain't going no place I'm going to stay on my post uh, until the Lord comes Oh, the fire, the fire that burns. Oh God, I can stay with sexual impurity. We're in the flesh, and the flesh warped against the spirit. But I got this fire on the inside. I may have a desire, but my heart says no. I say no to my flesh. I say no to the devil, because on the inside there's a fire. There's a fire. I don't have to curse you. I don't use profanity. I'm not going to curse you out no more. I'm tired of saying curse words because I've been in God's word. You see, I've been in his word and I've been loving on my Jesus and I've been thinking about how good he has been and my profanity has been released because of the fire on the inside. Oh, God help me. What the fire burns. Those of you with argumentative spirits uh, everything you want to argue about everything you got to you got to uh, you got to argue for everything there's a fire that can burn all of your arguments uh, and give you peace you're not the only person with the answer the other answers are fair and the fire brings on humility let the fire burn your shouting and screaming spirit oh God let the fire burn you don't have to shout or scream you don't owe anybody an answer when someone talks about you you don't have to respond just let the fire burn the Bible says pray for them that despitefully use you love them that despitefully use you do good to those that persecute you it's the fire even that unforgiving spirit people have hurt you they have cut you but on the inside you got to let the fire burn oh, that ain't nothing I gave that to the Lord I gave forgave him like he forgave me it's that unforgiving spirit 
I'm almost done. What the fire burns, a grieving spirit. To always grieving, always down. But the Holy Ghost gives you joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. And and this non-witnessing spirit, the fire. So you're gonna be a witness in Judea, Jerusalem, and the uttermost parts of the earth. I'm gonna put some fire in you. You're not gonna be ashamed of your fire. There are folk that got fire, and you are ashamed of your fire. But Paul says we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. The fire that burns. What is happening to the church? We have forgotten that we are the fire. We are the light of the world. Oh, I got excited as I meditated on this message that Jesus says, and ye shall receive. After you have received, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I'm going to give you so much fire. Can I take this home? Let me go further. The fire that burns how does it burn it's my faith my deeper faith my deeper love and I'm more rooted in God's word oh God oh God help me Holy Ghost I had to bring some fire in here this morning. I had to bring some walking fire because this is my life that I am a son of God and I got fire that burns stuff up on the inside of me. I can take it baby because there's a fire that knows how to burn my depression, my discouragement, my give up spirit there's a fire on the inside that's helping me there's a fire in my prayer there's a fire in my worship there's a fire uh, that's why the Bible says resist the devil it's not you but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world I ain't scared of the devil cause I got the fire I got the fire the fire that burns yeah you hurt me but I put it in the fire you talked about me but I put it in the fire you misunderstood me but I put it in the fire God hasn't given me a spirit of fear but he's given me a fire I got the fire I got the fire when I go to pray in my prayer closet there is a fire there's a fire burning the essential fervent prayer of the righteous man it evaded much and I got fire and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they in one place and one accord and suddenly there came a sound as a mighty rushing wind and there appeared in them cloven tongues as a fire and it filled the house and they were filled with the Holy Ghost give God a praise somebody the fire that burns the fire that burns get in the word get in the word love you some Jesus walk by faith and not by it's the fire. Wherever I go, take the fire. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The fire that burns. You got a hand praise. Fire! 
Where is the fire and what does it burn? Fire. The Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. He'll burn it up. He'll take care of it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper because of the fire. Give God a hand, praise. Oh, clap your hands. Hey, Kalabosata. Hey, Lebosata. When a sinner comes to this church, you will feel fire. Don't say, this is my seat. I sit here all the time. You got to go another way. You got to find another seat. No. You give your seat up and say, we're welcome. We're glad to have you. If gays, homosexuals, blacks or white, young or adulterers, fornicators come into this house, we show the fire. Man, we love you. We care for you. We're glad you're here today. Can't you feel the fire? Woo. Oh God, build our faith. Oh God, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Don't let us get stuck. Increase our faith. Like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and David and uh, Jehoshaphat. Oh God, increase our faith and give us a love of what you've done for me. I want to fall more deeply in love with him because my fire is connected to my appreciation of what he's done for me. I just want to say thank you. I've been saved for a long time but I still go in my closet and ask God to forgive me. I ask him to help me I asked him to search me. I asked him to heal me. I've been saved for a long time. But forgiveness and repentance is a part of my fire. I said, I'm sorry. I need you to lead me and guide me. In the word of God, the fire burns. That's why you get getting tripped up. Because your fire ain't burning the way it ought to burn. It's not burning the way it ought to burn. Because there's not enough word in your heart. The love is not rich enough. It's not rich. You got to mix the word. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 that they fail to mix the word with faith. I got to mix. I got to mix the word with my faith. And not just read the word, I become a doer of the word. I gotta do what God has said. That's when you know your fire is burning. My last point, your fire will show up in the midst of adversity. We turn the lights off so you can better see the fire. It's in the darkest hour. Things you can't explain, perplexity. I can't figure out what's going on. That's when your light best shines. Tears are flowing from your face. You can't figure out what's going on. I'm gonna let my fire burn. The fire that burns my questions. I got a lot of stuff going on. I can't figure it out. But in the darkness of the hour, in your trials and your tribulations, that's when you know whether your fire is lit or not do you remember what God said in his word are you loving him like you loved him last week is your faith increasing in the midst of your adversity the Bible says for these light afflictions which is just but for a moment working for us a far exceeding weight 
of eternal glory that your trials and tribulations tells you if you paid your light bill or not tells you whether your fire is burning or not so God I thank you for the opposition I thank you for the test because that fire is burning all that stuff I, I see the fire is burning and what the devil meant for evil God he meant it for good and the fire is burning in me I got joy unspeakable and full of glory but it's standing up but it's standing the fire that burns it burns stuff and you should be the Holy Ghost and with fire you will not be weak you will not be wishy-washy and jelly back you will not oh God if any man be in Christ he's a new creature thank you Lord all things have passed away. Behold, all things come new. Don't be afraid of the power, the fire of God. He's in fire to help you and to strengthen you and to enable you to give you joy and give you peace. Somebody needs some fire. You, 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 religion didn't work for you. Church did not work for you. You lack the fire. Jesus came. Said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and with fire and power. Remember, fire is the presence of God, the purification, the purification of God, and the power of God. He wants to put power in you, his presence and his purification in you by the way of the Holy Ghost. Anybody want fire tonight, this morning? You want some fire? The process is very simple. You, you repent. God, I'm sorry. Look, I'm not asking you to join this church, not, not at this point. We will have that conversation. But right now, I want you to think about Christ. Giving your life to Christ. Anybody here today? The process is very simple. You believe. I believe. I believe in the power of God. He purifies his presence, his power. I believe. After you believe, you act on your faith. Remember, a fire, there's oxygen, which is your faith. You got to get up and come. I want someone to come. I'm asking somebody to come and be baptized in Jesus' name. Because he wants to change your life. Not religion, not organization. He wants a relationship with you. You got to come. Come. Come and... You repent. You repent. Repent means you, ch you change your mind. On the screen, you will put the repentance up. You, you change your mind. I I'm thinking differently now. That's repentance. I don't want to go the way I used to go. I want to change my direction. Come on. Who wants to change? You repent. That's repentance. Then you are baptized in water. In the wonderful name of Jesus. And then God, he fills you with fire. Let's look on the screen. Those guys in the room and ladies as well, they have flames on top of their head signifying the power of the Holy Ghost. You can have that. You, you can have that. You see this flame that's above me? It signifies the, the flame of the Holy Ghost. The flame. And there appeared of them cloven tongues as a fire that set up on each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. We believe in the Holy Ghost. Who wants to change? Who wants a new life? I want you to come. 
who's not been baptized in water in Jesus name I want you to come I want you to come not about religion not about denomination not about organization no not not now it's not now it's about your relationship with Jesus Christ I want you to come I want you to come just come on step out step out by faith step out by his word step out thank you father the fire will burn stuff in you you see on the screen the things the fire can burn the best decision i made is receiving christ he burns stuff out of me you're trying to break a habit let god do it you can't do it you're trying to be you're trying to get free of your past let god do it he'll burn stuff Casting my cares upon him, for he cared for you. I want you to come. The, the fire that burns. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to give you fire. Fire. You want to change? You need the faith. Step out by faith. Step out because you love the Lord. Step out according to his word. That's fire. When you respond to the word of God by faith and by love, it's fire. She's going down in Jesus' name. Going down in Jesus' name. going down in Jesus name who else wants to go down in Jesus name who wants to change in their life give God the opportunity to change your life where are you my brother my sister where are you I want to give you power and fire through the Holy Ghost. I want to see healing in this church. I want to see demons being destroyed in this church. I want to see wonders and miracles in this church. It comes with the fire. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I want to see habits broken in this church. It's all a part of that fire. God's got fire. For demons to be cast out in this building is possible. New direction. Whew. To the power of his, of the fire of God. Who else? Two people are going down in Jesus' name. Two young people are going down in Jesus' name. What about you? Thank you. I want to make a final altar call. Because you know God's word and you you love God and you you have faith. But you know what? It's not it's not rich enough to create fire. Something's missing. And you know what's missing. Something you need more. I want you to come and let these ministers pray with you. Just just come step out quickly. Those of you who recognize God, I need I, 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 something is not as strong as it needs to be. Just walk out with humility. You don't have to be embarrassed, but just come and just say, Lord, I need help. I'm, I'm not believing your word. My faith and my love needs improvement. And allow these ministers to pray with you. God called you today for a shift. I want you to shift. I want your fire to burn. We laying on hands to stir up something on the inside like those atoms that are being stirred up. God wants to lay hands. I love to lay hands upon you to stir some stuff up in you. We need some more ministers to come and pray for these individuals. Please come. Please come. Please come. 
Please come. Please come. Faith is my oxygen. Heat is my love. The word of God is my fuel. You're lacking fire. You go to church, but you're lacking fire. You ought to come. I need the Holy Ghost. I need a breakthrough. You need to come. Please come. Please come. God has a fire for you. God's got a fire for you. Burn it out, Lord. Burn out my unbelief. Burn out, burn out my fear. Burn out my instability. Burn it out, God. Burn it out. Burn it out, Lord, through the word. Burn it out, Lord, through your love. Burn it out by my faith. Burn it out, Lord God. Fire. The fire that burns. Fire that burns. rid of something because you need the fire of God to burn it out I need God's fire I need God's fire thank you thank you thank you the fire the fire that burns. Burn it up! Burn it up! Burn it up, Lord! Burn it up! I've been traumatized. I've been hurt. I've been defeated. Burn it up, Lord! Burn it! Burn it! The fire that burns. Burn it up! I'm fearful. I'm scared. Burn it. Burn it out. Burn. Holy Ghost. Burn. 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 Burn, Lord. Burn it out. I'm hurt. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Thank you, ministers. You may, you may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Father. 
Can we give God a hand of praise for his goodness and mercy? The word of God, I love for him. I love for him and I have faith in God. As it increases, the fire will burn. The fire, the fire will burn. Amen. Thank God for everybody today. We have some candidates who candidates who are preparing for baptism. Uh, we have uh, a few individuals who are who completed our new members class. We want to recognize them in just a few minutes. Amen. Uh, I do want to make just a few announcements before they come. Uh, today we have uh, a meeting. A meeting immediately after service. It's uh, a new birth of a new ministry here at Temple Church of Christ. It's our marriage ministry. Somebody clap their hands. Marriage ministry. <laughs> Dr. St. Rice and Dr. Levada Rice are, are our chairpersons or overseers of this ministry. It's a new ministry. You don't have to have a broken marriage to be a part of this. This is for all marriages. So if your marriage is good, we want you to come. If your marriage is struggling, we want you to come. And let me say, there are no perfect marriages. There are no perfect marriages. Every marriage needs help. Those of you, we encourage you immediately after service, go downstairs and meet with us, the marriage couple. We're going to have a flyer. We'll talk to you about the marriage ministry. Uh, the enemy is out to destroy marriages. Not just the enemy, it's also called life. And we need the tools to ensure that our marriages stay strong. And Dr. Levada Rice and St. Rice are taking leadership with this new ministry at Temple Church of Christ, our marriage ministry. I want all married couples to be a part of this ministry. If you are married, I'd like you to be a part of this ministry to receive good information. Somebody say amen. Amen. So please be a part of that. Also, too, I want to invite everybody to our minister, ministerial alliance, Glory Line um, conference. <laughs> May the Avenger Cheryl Oliver is 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 our chairperson of the Minister Alliance. Everybody's invited. Now, this conference is targeted towards ministers, but it's open to everybody. We're going to have the dynamic Elona Suffolk Bishop Suffolk and Bishop Elona Dixon will be our our keynote speaker and she really is a dynamic teacher preacher and we have actually these kind of I call it tickets that uh, Vince Oliver is going to be passing out is $50 each and you'll somebody will be approaching you asking you to perhaps purchase one and support it but we're going to use some tickets and see how this works out but Avengers Oliver has the tickets and we ask everybody to be a part of that and it's the last Saturday in the month of September September the 30th uh, the glory line. This is our third time that we're doing it and we want everybody to be <laughs> above the glory line. Someone say above the glory line. Above the glory line. The glory line. The Lord put this in my heart several years ago to change the culture of the church and our goal is to do everything for his glory. To do it for his, to do it for his glory. This coming Wednesday, we're going to have a breakout session. I want to meet with all the men. All all the deacons, Deacon Sam, there were all the deacons here on Wednesday. All the men, if you are a member of Temple Church of Christ and a male, I need you here on Wednesday. I need to sow, I need importation, opportunity for importation with our men. If you're not a member, you're not asked to come. These are only people who are members of Temple Church of Christ. I'm meeting with all of the men. Lady D is meeting with all of the women on this coming Wednesday as well for importation into the women. She's gonna to talk to the women and I'm gonna to talk to the men. If you're a female and you consider yourself to be a member of Temple Church of Christ, I need you here on Wednesday. If you're a male and you consider yourself to be a member of Temple Church of Christ, I need you here on this coming Wednesday. All men, the men are gonna meet downstairs at seven o'clock. We may go an hour and a half, we won't be more than an hour and a half. But I need to talk to the brothers. Somebody say amen. I need to talk to the men. I need to close to a session with the men. I need to talk to the brothers. And Lady D needs the same with the women. So please join us uh, on social media. We probably will pray a previously recorded session. I'm not sure what we're going to just show just yet, but we'll show a previous.
Bible study or a sermon, but uh, we will not have our regular broadcast, but we will be here at the church. If you can show up, please show up. I want you to show up. You need to hear from Lady D, and the men need to hear from Pastor Stevens. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. I do want to remind everyone about uh, Eckert Forms uh, uh, event. If you can show that once again, Sister April will be in the, in the lobby area. You're still taking names, Sister April, is that correct? Are you full? I'm sorry. You collect money. Are you still yet collecting money? Sister. Who should they see? Or oh, offering in the back of the church? All right, very good. We'd like if you would participate in that as well. Um, I believe that's the end of the line at this point. We're waiting for our baptism. I'll ask the deacons if you'll come and give us leadership. Oh, thank you, Lady D. Appreciate that. Deacons, if you can hold off just one second. Amen. Sister Carol Battleborns, if you'll come and give us leadership in this portion of our service. Um, and also Sister Natasha Natasha Williams, if you'll come. I'm going to let this fire keep burning. Is that all right with y'all? I'm going to just let it, let it burn. We stop and pause for a baptism in Jesus' name. How old is she? How old is she? How old is she? How old is she? She's eight years old. If my memory serves me right, Sister Johnson was baptized at seven years old. I think it's something like seven. But uh, we ask these young children, do they know what they're doing? They're, they're interviewed, and so they know what they're doing. Amen. So they are conscious of what they're doing. They're well aware of what they're doing, which I think is, is necessary for our young people, as well as adults as well. Father, we thank you for these young people who have responded to the call. I pray, God, you'll bless them, God, and strengthen them. I pray, God, you'll give them, Lord, the Holy Spirit and give them everything, God, that you want them to have for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My dear little sister, Mackenzie Harris, do you believe that Jesus died for you? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus rose for you? Yes. And do you believe that Jesus is coming back for you? Yes. Based upon a confession of your faith and the confidence we have in the blessed word of life concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I now indeed baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. education and new members class who our director wonderful director sister Natasha Williams I'm telling you she is a hard worker she may be in the background but I'm gonna tell you she is a hard worker she is dependable and we thank God for that without her we our our Sunday school program would not be what it is today so the following people have completed the new members class and uh, as I call your name, please come forward. Sister Willistein Clerk. And I must say something about her. She took the class the first time, and she said to me, can I take it again? She said, because I believe that if I take it one more time, I think that I'll understand even better. So she took the class twice. Wow. Amen. Sister.
Sister Linda Collins. Sister Linda Collins actually completed the class in April, but she is just now receiving her certificate, so she has been a member for a quite a while. Amen. Elder Eugene Neal. Amen. He actually took the class a couple of months ago with his wife, but he was absent for one of them, and so he had to make it up. <laughs> Sister Cassandra Patton. Amen. Our songster, she as well, completed the class, she completed three classes the previous session, and she completed the last session, this session in August. Amen. Sister Camille Sanders, thank you, Lord. Not only has she completed the class, but she is baptized and Holy Ghost filled. Amen. <laughs> Sister Velma Sharp, I am, is Sister Sharp here today? Okay. She will get her certificate on a later date. And Brother Linwood Taylor, I think he also is absent today. But they have completed the new members class, and we are so happy for them. So thank you, and we appreciate it. They are, make sure you show them love, because they have completed the class. Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay, so these are our new members. We do have a new class that starts next month. I believe we have, I think, about eight people that have signed up so far. So if you want to sign up for the class next month, please see Sister Carol Battle Barnes. Okay, God bless you. And let me also add to that um, next month, a new class is, is was, was going to start. We'll start a new class for a uh, high school at Miller High uh, on, on Fire for Jesus. And uh, I'll be teaching the class and I want high school students and middle school, middle school students to be a part of that class. This is a class really to improve our prayer life and those who are seeking the Holy Spirit and just developing our relationship. I've come to learn that rules and, rela rules and regulations without a relationship creates rebellion. Say that again. Rules, religion, regulation without relationship creates rebellion. The goal then is to focus on relationship. Relationship is key. And a part of this class for uh, young, young people, high school and, and middle, middle school, I want to be able to sow into their life for a semester. So if you have any young children, Boys and girls, I'd like you to be a part of our Christian education because we're going to work on relationship. I believe that when your relationship is solid, you will pursue God at a new level. Come on, like Cornelius in the Bible. As you pursue the Lord, you will receive the Holy Ghost and all that God has for you, but you focus on relationship and not on tongues. It's not about the tongues, it's about the relationship. Because you can improve your relationship, what God will do, he'll give you more. Somebody say amen. amen. So the first Sunday in October, we will start our class, uh, our Fired Up for Jesus class for our middle high and um, junior, high, junior high school students as we talk about our relationship with Christ. Not about rules and regulations, it's about relationship. Rules are important, relationship, regulations are important, but more importantly, it's relationship. Because if we miss our own rules, if we miss our own relationship, it will create, foster a spirit of rebellion. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Yeah. Right, we're going to take a quick shot. <laughs> Thank you. Then, you know, can we also thank the Lord for Sister Carol Battleborns, please? She pours out in these classes week after week after week, and Sister Nija Chris, uh, she normally joins her too, but she was teaching, though, like at different classes. You know? But Sister Carol, thank you so much for everything that you do. We appreciate you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Sister Natasha. Thank you so much. Um, at this time now, I want you to, if you would please keep uh, Pastor uh, Samuel Patterson in prayer uh, today. Um, he lost his daughter under some very uh, unfavorable circumstances, and the funeral is today at 4 o'clock. So uh, if you keep him, his family, and his church in prayer, uh, it's a very sad situation, and he needs our prayers. You know, I've been speaking with him, and he needs, and he's doing fine, but he needs, he needs our prayer. To see your child in a casket, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that, I don't know what that means, but a song is good, but I, you need a word from the Lord. You got to hear from God. I understand that. I understand that part. He needs our prayers. That God will help him and comfort him and give him peace through this particular situation. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the word. We thank you for the fuel that we need, God, to make it from day to day. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of your mouth. Give us a hunger for your word. And I pray that through the word, God, that our faith will be built. I pray that we'll be fortified for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I pray, God, for increased love, that we will love you. And that love will cause us to love our enemies and to pray for those that despitefully use us, God. I pray for fire, God. I pray for transformation, God. Not showmanship, God. But I pray, Lord, that we can show the world that Christ is our leader. You're our guide, God. God, give us the fire that we need to overcome opposition in front of us. Help us, Lord God, not to be professional churchgoers, but I pray, God, that we will be in right relationship with you, Jesus. Transform us. Change us. Heal us. Deliver us. Set us free. I pray, God, for a release. I pray, God, for a new determination. I pray for a new thirst, a new appetite, God, that we will pursue you as never before. Stir up our hearts in the midst of adversity and trials and tribulations. Stir us up to believe you. For if we faint in the day of adversity, our strength is small. I pray that we'll be conscious of your word and the love that you have for us and we have for you. And thank you, Lord God, for the faith that you've given us. Now, God, allow us to leave this place changed by the word that we've heard today. Heal us or we're broken. With their broken marriages, heal them. For those who are single, God, I pray for their strength and their peace and their singleness. I pray for the fire that burns, that gives them peace. God, even in their single living, I pray for them as well. Now, God, we give you thanks. I pray you give us safety as we leave this place. Allow us to arrive at our destinations safely and find all well. I pray for my brother Samuel Patterson. Lord, pass this out. Patterson, God, you strengthen him, God. I pray, God, you hold him up. In the loss of his precious daughter of 25 years of age, God, I pray you hold him up. And comfort him as only you can do, Jesus. Give him that peace. The past is all understanding. Let the fire burn his pain. And strengthen him, Lord, for your glory. Now, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. And those who are sick and struggling in their bodies, I pray for the fire that burns sicknesses and diseases. And I pray for healing in your precious name. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. This time now we'll have... Uh...